we're looking at American Musical Theater. Um, we're looking specifically at this play, Oklahoma, which you might uh, look right there, and there's an exclamation point. That is part of the title, so whenever you write uh, the title of this play, there is the exclamation point there. Um, now, go ahead and highlight where it says premiere. The premiere was March 31st, 1943. And um, so the premiere date, that's the day that it opened, not the day of out-of-town tryout. Uh, so it's the official opening. The other thing that you are going to highlight is music by Richard Rogers, lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II, book by Oscar Hammerstein II, based on the play Green Grow the Lilacs by Lynn Riggs. Okay. We're then going to go down to director, but this is what I want you to do. In front of where it says director, I would, you, I would like you to put original, because we're also going to be looking, we're not, and you're going to highlight that. So make sure that you're doing that in pen or pencil. So put original in pen or pencil in front of director. The original director, go ahead and highlight Ruben Malmulian. Ruben Malmulian was the original director. And then put a backslash after that. Backslash. And then you're going to put director 1999. Director 1999, and the director of the version that we're going to see is from a revival. Revival is just what it sounds like. It's after the show is closed for either a couple of months or several years to several decades. When they redo the play, it's called revival, so it's been revived. So the revival was done by Trevor Nunn. N-U-N-N, -N, Trevor Nunn, and you're going to write that after the backslash. So you're going to put Director 1999, Trevor Nunn, and then you're going to highlight that as well. So Director 1999, Trevor Nunn, and then highlight that. Choreography, in front of choreography, you're going to put original, again, in pen or pencil, original. This was originally directed by Agnes DeMille, who you're going to highlight her name. And then, just as with uh, the director, you're going to backslash and put for, uh, uh, choreography 1999. Choreography for the revival is a woman named Susan Stroman, and that's S T R O M A N Stroman, right up here. If you can't read it, it's Susan Stroman. I'll say it one more time: S T R O M A N. So those are that's information that will be on the test. Okay, so that's very important. This paper is important because you'll need it. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of the backstory, and then we're going to turn the paper over, and we're going to go through uh, what is on the PowerPoint. Now, whatever is on the PowerPoint is what you're going to be writing down, but I'm also going to be giving you a little bit of backstory on each of these people, because each of them are important in music, in the beginning of the American musical. Okay, so as it says here, Richard Rogers wanted to... Um, make Green Grow the Lilacs into a musical, and it just so happened that Oscar Hammerstein, who was also in musical theater, wanted to do the same. Now, the backstory on that is the fact that originally they had two separate partnerships with two separate people, okay? Now, one of the questions on the test is going to involve these two separate people. So, the two separate people 
is a man named Lorenz Hart. So go ahead and uh, push the next slide here. Okay, and I have it up here. Okay, so the, the other man was a man named Lorenz Hart. And for some reason, I don't see it up here. So his nickname was Larry. Larry Hart um, was the partner to Richard Rogers. So go ahead and put that in the column there. Richard Rogers and Lorenz Larry Hart were originally partners. On the back? They're on the margin. In the margin. They're on the front. Richard Rogers and Larry Hart or Lorenz Hart were originally partners. Now, and Lorenz or Larry Hart, and it's up there. I know it's a strange, not a very normal, everyday name. So Lorenz Hart were partners. Okay. Now, they, uh, they met in college. You don't have to write this down. They met in college. Um, both wanted to get into musical theater, into theater. Um, Richard came from kind of an upper middle class family. So his going to college wasn't, you know, it was done. Um, but Larry's family came from a very poor immigrant background, which we're going to speak about in a little bit because that's a big part of the, of the American musical. Um, Larry's background, he kind of had to work his way through college, getting scholarships, working as hard as he could, because he was the first person in his family to go to college. Um, so the way that they got into musical theater, they were introduced by friends, and they started to do songs together and trying to get them in what were called reviews, which I'm going to talk about a, a little bit later. And um, reviews were kind of a chance for big Broadway producers and directors to scout out new talent to bring them to Broadway. And so their first big hit, and you're going to write this down, is a song called Manhattan. Manhattan. <coughs> and it goes, we'll take Manhattan, the Bronx and Staten Island too. It's lovely going to the zoo. What is it called? Manhattan. So, so this is this is part of the test. Okay, this is the question on the test. <coughs> what were Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein's first partners, and what? two famous works did they do together? Now, I've given you one, so it's your job to find a second. Okay? All right, now, Oscar Hammerstein's partner was a man named Jerome Kern, and that's K-E-R-N. And I, for some reason, I left it off of that list, but it's Jerome, just spelt regularly, Jerome, and then Kern, K-E-R-N. And their big work together was a show called Showboat. And I'm going to talk about that because um, it was, so what was his name? Jerome Kern. Jerome Kern. And Jerome what did they write together? Showboat. Showboat. Okay, so I'm going to repeat myself. So listen. Showboat. Oscar Hammerstein's partner was named Jerome Kern. Kern. K-E-R-N. Their big work together was a show called Showboat. And I'm going to talk about that because Oklahoma is considered by uh, most theater historians to be the first fully realized contemporary American musical at the same time. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, there were several milestones leading up to this, and Showboat is one of them. Okay, so go ahead and go to the next slide. Go ahead and turn your paper over. Oh, uh, 
I, I think you want to. Okay, so, no, no, it's fine. Okay, so, as I said before, and you're going to be writing this down, a lot of, um, a lot of what happened with the American Musical um, comes from, uh, if you guys remember your 7th, 8th grade, Ellis Island studies, if you didn't do the actual project itself, you might remember some of the information from it. There, was a, there were many immigrants that were coming in around 1880s, 1890s. Uh, most of them were uh, Jewish descent, and a big portion of them were uh, coming from Eastern Europe. Now, um, I've said this before in some classes, there are, it, uh, a lot of people don't realize that there are two types of Jewish uh, descendants. There are Ashkenazi Jews, and there are Sephardic Jews. Now, Sephardic Jews are usually from the south of Europe, uh, so they have blonde hair and blue eyes and fair skin. So they don't look like our concept of what Jewish people would look like. The Ashkenazi Jews, on the other hand, are generally from Eastern Europe. So the, these were the Jews who were coming over during that great immigration in the 1880s, 1890s. The Ashkenazi Jews are what Hitler kind of personified as being the stereotypical Jew and what we kind of think of as uh, looking like a Jewish person. Although there are, there are two types which are not mentioned. Now, what happened is uh, during the 1880s, 1890s, there was a lot of unrest in Russia. And um, you have to realize that the Russians during the 1880s, 1890s, when the rest of the world was going into the Industrial Revolution, Russia was still stuck in the feudal system of the Middle Ages. So it's an economy that was not based on the Industrial Revolution, which is still evident today. Those of you who might be interested in uh, political studies later in college, um, which is why that there's still that uh, tension between in politics between America and, or the rest of the world and Russia, which is a lot of what is happening right now with Vladimir Putin and everything that's going on with uh, his progress into parts of Europe that he should not really be going into. Did some dangerous get uh, shot? Who knows? Well, I haven't been pe uh, keeping up with, oh. with the politics over there recently. So this was the cause for the mass immigration at this time. So as I said with pogroms, and here's a picture of a pogrom, a lot of the times what would happen is a neighboring non-Jewish uh, town would kind of get it into their heads that they needed to go and destroy all of the Jewish people in that, the next town over and um, go in and just pretty much slaughter everybody. So um, it wasn't pretty, and this was especially happening a lot in the 1880s, 1890s in Russia. So that's the reason why we get so many Jewish people in, in the 1880s and 1890s. Um, go to the next slide. Now one of them, the uh, one of the first kind of big guy in this is a man named Irving Berlin. He was born May 11th, 1888, and died September 20th, 1989. Um, he said one of his first memories of coming over uh, was that he remembered the pogrom happening in his, in his town, in his what were called shtetls, um, in his shtetl, and um, his house being burnt to the ground as people were being slaughtered around him. So his family then made the trip to America shortly after that and settled into New York about um, 1893, I believe. Um, so they came over. His original, original name was Israel Isidore Baleen, but the story goes that the man at Ellis Island couldn't pronounce it, so just called them Berlin and put it on the register. So that's how he became.